We all know that Albert Einstein was the most genius person in history. He was such a genius that he could use his brain more than a thousand scientists. What is far away for humans to understand, they cannot even think about it. Einstein not only understood those things, but also made them easy for the whole world. Albert Einstein was a physicist who published the theory of special relativity, E equals mc squared, and formulated the photoelectric laws, leaving the world surprised. Therefore, he was awarded the Nobel Prize. Seeing his extraordinary thinking and understanding power, people believed that Einstein had an extraordinary brain, which was quite different from an ordinary human's. Einstein, too, knew this, and therefore he didn't want any part of his body to be researched upon after his demise. Rather, he had instructed his body to be cremated. But the same happened what Einstein was afraid of. On April 18, 1955, when Einstein died in Princeton Hospital, the doctor who came to perform the autopsy stole Einstein's brain secretly because he was curious to know what's there inside the brain of the world's most genius person. Dr. Thomas Harvey was the doctor who stole Einstein's brain, and he was more interested in studying this brain than facing the consequences. When the Princeton Hospital came to know about this incident, they fired him. However, Dr. Harvey was successful in persuading Hans Albert, son of Albert Einstein, to give him permission to research upon his father's brain and let the world know about the secrets hidden in it. From that day, the longest journey started for that brain. Dr. Harvey was a pathologist who knew only about post-mortems, and that's why he believed that he would be able to research this genius's brain. However, the situation was such that Dr. Harvey had lost his job at Princeton Hospital, as well as the designation of a pathologist. Einstein's brain which had already been preserved by Dr. Harvey. He took Einstein's brain to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where he took a lot of photos of the brain and cut it into 240 small pieces. He preserved all the pieces in separate jars and hid all of them in his basement. Because of this, Dr. Harvey had arguments with his wife many times, as his wife used to threaten him that she would throw this brain out one day. The arguments increased so much that they had to divorce and separate. Dr. Harvey went to Wichita, Kansas, with the brain, where he started working as a medical supervisor. Here, in his free time, he tried to study Einstein's brain deeply. After that, he frequently switched different jobs and moved to different cities with the brain. Even after many years, Dr. Harvey couldn't do any solid research on Einstein's brain. Instead, his medical license was canceled, and the situation was so bad for him that he had to start working in a plastics factory. Then, he made a good decision for the first time. He decided to send different pieces of the brain to the best neurologists in the world for detailed research, and he did that 30 years after the brain was first stolen. In 1985, a study was published on Einstein's brain. For the next 28 years, many neurologists published several studies on this genius brain. In these studies, it was found that Einstein's brain was quite different from the ordinary human brain. The biggest difference was found in the part known as the corpus callosum. Now, it's important to understand that the human brain is divided into two hemispheres. Whatever work a human does is processed in one hemisphere, and then the brain sends signals to the corresponding part of the body. The left brain controls the right portion of the body, whereas the right brain controls the left portion of the body. For 90% of humans, the left brain is responsible for speech, understanding mathematical calculations, and writing. Whereas the right brain is responsible for creativity, understanding of shapes, art, and music. Now, you must be wondering about the purpose of the corpus callosum. Imagine you are typing on a keyboard or a mobile phone, and while doing this, both of your hands are busy typing. Your left hand is typing some alphabets, and the right hand is also doing the same. During typing, your left hand makes a mistake 
and you quickly use your right hand to erase that mistake. It means that when your right brain noticed a mistake, it rectified it by signaling the left brain. The link through which both halves of the brain are connected is called the corpus callosum. Einstein's corpus callosum was larger than that of ordinary humans, which means that his left and right brain had a stronger connection. Because of this, Einstein could imagine more complex problems and situations simultaneously. Apart from the difference in the corpus callosum, Einstein's brain's pattern was also quite different from that of ordinary humans. Researchers believe that this difference was the reason for a good neuron flow. Good flow of neurons means that he had great power for mathematical calculations. Albert Einstein had the ability to solve complex mathematical problems in his brain without using pen and paper. Another reason for having a high number of neurons was also mentioned in research papers. When Einstein's brain was weighed, it weighed 1230 grams, whereas the average weight is around 1400 grams for a normal human being. Researchers believe that his brain's lining was quite thin, which meant it contained more neurons. But the biggest question still remained. Was Einstein born with such a special brain, or were there changes afterward? After researching, it was found that when Albert Einstein was born, he started speaking after the age of five, whereas other children start speaking at the age of two or three. Even after he started speaking, he didn't like to speak much and remained lost in his own thoughts. He had less memorizing power. He found it difficult to memorize simple multiplication tables. He excelled in processing math and numbers in logical ways rather than memorizing them. In his school life, although he failed in other subjects, mathematics and science were the only subjects in which he obtained the highest marks among all the students. When Albert Einstein was 12 years old, a family teacher left his geometry book in Einstein's house. Surprisingly, in just one day, Einstein read that book and cleared his geometric concepts. Not only that, he had become a master of integral and differential calculus at the age of 14. His grip on mathematics and science was so strong that professors used to become nervous when he raised his hand to ask questions because often Einstein's questions were too difficult for even the teachers to understand. From a very young age, he wanted to encapsulate the laws of the universe in a small equation, and this became his life's mission. At the age of 26, Einstein published four research papers that surprised the world. Therefore, he was awarded a Ph.D. degree and the Nobel Prize for his outstanding role for humanity. You can only guess from the fact that even today, without Einstein's thesis, science is incomplete. Many doctors and scientists have come to the conclusion that Einstein's brain became special after his birth. The biggest reason behind it was that when he couldn't find answers to his questions, he tried to find them with the help of his brain. Doing so from a young age, his brain developed accordingly. Today, Einstein's brain is kept in the Museum of America, preserved with great care in microscopic slides. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please share it, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon for more video notifications. Thanks.